A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night, he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please, tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask me my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Wrestling. When I think of Jacob wrestling with God, I'm brought back to my own childhood experiences of wrestling with my dad. My wrestling matches with my father were always the highlight of my day. We would fight to the death, or until my dad decided it was time for bed, whichever came first. Our battles were fought on an old beat up couch in the basement. My mom would always watch disapprovingly, sure that, that it was only a matter of time before someone got hurt. Thankfully, no one ever did. I guess I must have been some sort of wrestling prodigy because I distinctly remember winning almost every wrestling match against my dad. <laughs> my dad, on the other hand, seemed to enjoy the wrestling matches because they were the only way to tire out a seemingly inexhaustible young boy and make him actually excited to go to bed. That's exactly what I was at the end of every wrestling match, completely and utterly exhausted. So weary, I felt glued to the floor, unable to complete even the simple task of moving my hand a few inches to scratch an itch. It's tiring work, finding someone or something that's stronger than you in every way. If I thought that wrestling with my father was hard, I can only imagine how hard it must have been for Jacob to wrestle with the father, the creator of the universe. I mean, I'm sure Jacob was hitting the gym pretty often, but let's face it, no amount of time on the bench press can prepare you for wrestling with God. But God chose not to beat Jacob. Why? Because that wasn't the reason that God chose to wrestle Jacob in the first place. The real reason God wrestled with Jacob was to help him grow stronger. God wrestled Jacob to show him that he was stronger than he thought he was and to give him the confidence to lead God's chosen people. Now, I don't know everyone in this congregation too well, but I'd be willing to bet that God hasn't recently called out to anyone here challenging them to a wrestling match. And he probably won't anytime soon, because God doesn't always challenge us in the form of a wrestling match. Our challenges in life come in all shapes and sizes. I know that compared to most of this congregation, I'm pretty young, and I haven't experienced anywhere near the number of problems in life that all of you have. And because of this, I don't pretend to have all the answers. But I do know one thing. Fighting life's challenges hurt. One of the greatest challenges in my relatively short life has been the passing of my grandpa. My grandpa, my grandpa lived about a two hour drive away in the countryside, so I was able to visit him pretty frequently. And because we visited so often, I was very close with my grandpa. I remember sitting on his lap and doing the daily jumble with him, or going on walks through the cornfields looking for ancient Native American arrowheads, or listening as he played his trumpet at the Sunday services at his local church. When I was nine, my grandpa began to struggle with a health issue. We all prayed for him, but after a couple of years, he eventually succumbed to his disease. This was a rocky time in my faith journey. 
This was the first time when I started to think about death and wrestle with the question of why bad things happen to good people. I didn't understand why God could let my grandpa just die like that. To me, he seemed like a model Christian, loving, caring, and an active member of his church. What right did God have to take him away from me? It's been a few years since my grandpa's passed away, and there are still times when I feel like I haven't come any closer to the answers that I've been looking for. And whenever I visit my grandparents' house, I still feel the sadness that comes with realizing my grandpa is no longer with us. Sometimes it feels as if the pain and suffering we are put through is not worth the lesson we learn, or in my case, that we seem to have learned no lesson at all. In the scripture, God breaks Jacob's hip and Jacob limps away, never to walk normally again. Our challenges in life sometimes cause us to feel as if we've been broken or maimed in the process. But what we need to realize is that although life's challenges are hard, they're a crucial part of our human growth. Without adversity in life, we won't be able to grow from our struggles. One of my personal favorite stories about growing through adversity is about Biosphere 2. Biosphere 2 is a series of giant glass domes located in a small town outside of Tucson, Arizona. Scientists use these domes to create a completely self-sustainable ecosystem in the hope that it might one day be recreated on other planets to help sustain human life. For this project, the scientists had their pick of whatever tree species they wanted. One tree species they chose was picked for its fast growth and incredible strength. However, a few years into the experiment, the scientists noticed that the supposedly strong tree species was drooping over instead of growing tall and strong like its counterparts in the wild. The scientists were perplexed by this problem. What had caused such a strong tree to go so weakly in the biosphere? After many experiments, the scientists finally discovered the answer. It was the lack of wind in the biosphere. You see, in nature, the tree grew in very windy areas. The only reason the tree grew so strong in the wild was because it grew strong against the force of the wind. Without the wind, the tree was unable to form the stress wood necessary to grow tall and strong. The wind was crucial to the tree species, and without it, the tree wasn't able to fully mature. Just as the tree in Biosphere 2, we need our wind, our adversity, to help us grow in life. Without it, we will stop learning and growing as a person. When I first learned that I had gotten this internship position, two emotions overwhelmed me. Excitement. I was so excited to get the chance to work at the church and get a peek at all the inner workings of what goes on behind the scenes. In addition, I would be able to explore my faith with the help of our great pastors here, Lillian, Seth, and Kendra, and all the other wonderful staff members at this church. The feeling of excitement was immediately followed by a rush of nervousness. I was bombarded by thoughts of, I can't do this. This is way too much responsibility. There's no way I'll ever be able to stand up in front of the congregation and deliver a sermon. But I didn't let these thoughts stop me from taking this internship. And even though at times it has been challenging, this internship has been hugely beneficial to me on my faith journey. But if I'd let the nerves get the better of me and hadn't accepted the challenge, I wouldn't have grown in the way that God had called me to grow. Sometimes it feels as if our challenges in life are insurmountable and there is no end in sight. But this is the time where we most need to keep pushing on. The hardest part of any struggle always occurs right before the end. When you run a race, the last straightaway is always the worst, but you push through because you know you are almost at the finish line. Even though we can't always foresee when our challenges will end, we find out from experience that things tend to get harder before they can get easier. There's a famous proverb that says, it's always darkest before the dawn. And although it sometimes seems that the dawn will never come, each day it always does. In our scripture today, when daybreak comes, God and Jacob stop wrestling, and Jacob's struggle is finally over. Just as daybreak comes on Jacob's trials, so too will the light of a new day break over our challenges and start a new chapter in our lives. Life's challenges aren't fun, but no one ever said life was going to be easy. The beauty of life 
comes from both the ups and the downs. Without the downs, we wouldn't be able to fully appreciate the ups of life. God puts challenges before us to help us grow, even though it's not always evident what lesson we are supposed to learn. Just as the trees in Biosphere 2, we need the adversity of life to shape us into the people we hope to become. And although our obstacles sometimes seem overwhelming, we know that we do not have to fight them alone and that one day they will end. For those of you who are dealing with life's challenges right now, know that you are surrounded by people here at this church who love you and want to help you. And as horrible as you feel right now, things will eventually get better. For those of you who are in between life's challenges, reach out to those in need, because your help can make all the difference. Just as God blesses Jacob at the end of the fight, so too will God bless you as you journey through the challenges of life. Amen.